Okay, so this is the breakdown for the test. Overall, um, I think pretty good for the first test. Now you kind of know the testing style, you know um, what to expect, kind of like that pre-test, now going into the next chapter. One thing students really like about this class is it's very broken up. So chapter two stuff really won't be a prereq for anything else we do. We're actually going to skip around some of the chapters. So today we're going to talk about chapter 11, which is kind of a whole new ball game. So if you did really well on this test, that's great, but it's not going to necessarily have help you on chapter 11. If you did really poor on this test, then you want to make sure you do something maybe different than you did last time, but it's going to be new material. So chapter 11, just chapter 11 is 11 one is what we're going to talk about today, but I think there's nine sections in it. But it'll be on the final though, right? This will be 25% of the final. So, yeah. So that being said, I have the answer key and I will post the answer key. Now, the grading is pretty set. Now, if you have a question on the grading, let me know. Um, I have a, a rubric I kind of follow. This is worth three points. Everyone got three points off if they did it this way. You think that's not necessarily fair? More than welcome to come talk to me about it, and I will tell you, well, I did that for everyone, or I'll reevaluate the question. Um, some things to to check. I'm human, so make add up all your points. And make sure they really, you know, subtract. You missed 20. Make sure that there's really minus 20. Um, it happens if I make an error. I want to know about it now versus a week after you take the final. You come to me and say, "Oh, really? You made an error when you graded the, you know, chapter one or chapter two test." I should really have an extra five points there. So kind of keep up with it. Make you know, just kind of check over. Has that ever happened to you? There. No, it hasn't. No. I always have this, you know, fear that it is. It's happened to me where students like, "Oh, it says I missed." You know, it says I missed 10 and you took, you know, it says 80, where sometimes my math just gets a little crazy, but it's fast, it's easy to fix. I will upload these scores to Blackboard, so they will be saved on Blackboard. I have to um, format Blackboard since this is a weighted course. This is 15% of your overall grade, so I want that to reflect, you know, like 100 points. I want that to uh, um, reflect that in Blackboard. But right now, this is the only grade you really have. You have your, your homework in this grade. This is kind of where you stand in the course at this point. Um, answer key. So everything was worth two points on the first page. Now, if you would have put equal, that was only minus one. If you put equal or equivalent, you only missed one because it was full. So it was kind of two points that way. So some, if you're comparing your test or you're looking why did no, they missed two here and I missed one or something. There's usually a reason for that question. Can you explain 2B one time? 2B? Yes. Oh yeah, this is false because the this set is larger than that set. So this set cannot be a subset. So it's a false statement. That's why B is true. That's Got it. Right. Nope. Why, That's well, yeah, D is true because it is a subset. Right. That's yeah. Like. So, yeah, sometimes it can be a little tricky. <laughs> but, wait, if it, was, if it was switched, it wouldn't be true. Okay. Question? Yeah, uh, on the back page, number mm -hmm. 10, um, I got count off points in my pie. Yes. Um, so I got, like, the majority of my questions right underneath. Does it say picture? Oh yeah. It if it's okay, so on the last one, the way I graded it, if if you got your answers from your picture and your picture was wrong, I counted your answers right from your picture, but you missed points for having the picture wrong. Mm. So if you would have had an eight here, a lot of people had an eight here and a one here, and they say how many students use cash and financial aid but not debit card? So cash and financial aid but not the debit card, and they put eight as their answer. I gave them points for that because from their picture, they understood the right location to look from, but they didn't have the right number there. And a lot of students missed seven points on this problem because they put eight, eight, four, and then their numbers were all off. Because eight people had cash and financial aid, but one of those had all three. So that was a very common problem students missed on that. But if it says from the picture, it means you got it counted right from your picture. Some of you had the wrong number from your picture, and so you missed it from there. Question? Maybe you just said, but why did everyone get plus two? 
So if you go, um, so generally the way I give exams, there's some room for a little bit of interpretation on sometimes some things that might be worded a little poorly or whatnot. So I always make it worth more than 100 points, but then I cut off at 100 points. So this particular one was worth 102 points. So the, if you got them all right, you got 102 points out of 100. So what I did is I went through and graded it, and I took off points as I normally would, and then at the end I give you two back. Like it's kind of floating bonus. Instead of saying this is worth two bonus points, I just put it in the test. So you get the two bonus points. And that's it. Question? I was wondering if you could show us how to show me how to do 8B. So 8B? Yeah. Is it this one here? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that MK is. That's the same notation as up here. And I don't know why this is zooming out here. Okay. That's the same notation as this. So 5B means there's six elements in not B. So here, this is saying how many elements there are in K. Some people wrote out all the elements, um, and they listed E more than once. So they came up with eight. But you can't count E more than once. So the correct answer. So yeah, this is just a little bit more on notation. What's it mean to be in K? What's it mean to be K? K is a set of all letters in the world word envelope. So that's E, N, V, L, O, P, and there are six of them. There are six dis distinct letters. Question? Can you show me the answer for 5B? 5B is six. So a lot of you wrote out not B and didn't. Um, there's a couple people that put like six subsets, and I didn't count off. I just marked out the word subset because it has nothing to do with subsets. Yeah, so there's six elements and not B. That's what that in notation is. So again, um, it's important to kind of go over this. I will post this on Blackboard so you'll have the answer key. And this is going to be helpful when we go to study for the final exam. Because 25% of the final exam will be material from this section. All right? So I will post that. I want to continue along with chapter 11. So we're going to cover nine sections in chapter 11. No, we'll have a test over on chapter 11. Yeah, so all of our tests, chapter 2, chapter 11, chapter 10. Chapter 11, chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 10. Chapter 11, chapter 10. So this brings us to um, the fundamental counting principle and permutations. <coughs> this chapter is called combinatorics, which is just a fancy way of saying um, different ways of counting things. So again, we're going to do a lot of notation because we're assuming you've never seen this before. So we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. We're going to calculate values of factorial expressions, what's come in handy with uh, some of these formulas. If you don't already have a scientific calculator, you want to get one for this section, because a lot of your calculators have a permutation and a combination button. So if you want to say, how many ways can I, what's the permutation of five objects picking two at a time, how many different ways do I have that, you can use your calculator for that. So that leads us to permutations of in objects taking r at a time. Find the number of permutations. So this section is all about permutations. The next section we'll talk about will be combinations. And then when it comes to the exam, it's going to be tricky because you're going to have to identify, is this a combination or is this a permutation? So we'll, we'll talk about one is order matters. One, two, three is different than two, one, three. Okay. But it will come up where, where we'll formalize it a lot more. So the fundamental counting principle, and you know in math we like to say things really kind of long-winded sometimes. But what this is, is a sequence of n events in which the first event can occur k1 times, the second event can occur k2 times, the third event can occur k3 times, and so on. The, number, the total number of ways the sequence can occur is you multiply them together. This is a common problem in like middle school. If you have three pair of pants, two shirts, and five hats, how many different outfits can you make? Right? You would just multiply those three numbers together because if I can wear three different pairs of pants, it means I have three different ways to wear my pants. If I have two different ways to wear a shirt, three times two, there's six different ways to wear pants and shirts. If I throw in hats, it's just one extra way, right? So that is the fundamental counting principle. 
there's k ways to do one thing and k two ways to do another thing to do those two things together you just multiply those two ways so there are four blood types this is an um, example of blood types here. There are four blood types, and there's also a plus minus factor, the RH factor, right? So if a local blood bank labels donations according to type, RH factor, and gender of the donor, how many different ways can a blood sample be labeled? So coming up here, I always kind of think of this as you want to put it in categories. So if I think of, okay, how many different ways to label the type? There, there's four ways, right? There's A, B, A, B, or O. How many different ways to label the RH factor? Two. Two, two. and how many different ways to label gender? Two. two. True. So this book was published two years ago, so we're going to go with the two. Gotcha. So that tells me my answer is 16 ways. So the fundamental, the fundamental <coughs> theory, the fundamental counting principle is four ways to do the type, two ways to do the RH factor, and two ways to do the gender. So there's 16 total ways. There's going to be 16 different categories. Okay. We'll do examples of kind of tree diagrams to write out the total categories, but sometimes these get really large. And we don't want to necessarily write out 300 different ways to do something. But this leads to probability. I say if I draw one at random, what's the probability that it's from a female? So we have to have, it's what we're building up to is some probability. We, we have to have how many possible outcomes are there. Here's another one. And you have to be careful if it says um, with repetition or without repetition. Those are going to be some key words. The letters A, B, C, and D, and E are used in a four-letter ID card. How many different cards are possible if the letters are allowed to be repeated? If I can repeat them and I have a four-letter ID card, how many options do I have for my first input? One, two, three, four, five. How many do I have for the second? Four, four, five, five. Oh, wait, five, yeah. Right, so, yeah, repeated here. So 625, five to the fourth power. So banks have to deal with all this all the time. Um, there's also interesting, uh, telephone applications to so this, you know, of everyone, you know, how many telephones are possible in a 417 area code and then how many different area codes and things like that. So you can get into some really large numbers here, but there's 625 ways you could have a four letter ID card. How many cards are possible if each letter can only be used once? You'd have five times four times two. 120. 120. So a lot less. Where, where are you getting the three and the two? Um, for my first choice, I have five possible. If I use one of them, I only have four possible. Okay. If I use one of them, I only have three possible. If I use one of them, I only have two possible. So there's four blanks for my ID card. There's four different categories. For my first choice, I have five options. My second choice, since I can't repeat them, I only have four, then three, then two, and that's 120 ways. So repeated, keep the same number, and then use one, so you have to subtract. Yeah, if, if it says they can't be repeated, then you have to, every time, you have to decrease the number of possibilities. De decrease the number of choices you have. So repetition is an important concept. So sometimes when you're reading these, they'll, they'll kind of be a little long-winded sometimes, and you might want to highlight certain things or underline, you know, can they be repeated? How many options do I have? And then it's just going from there. You'll, you'll always tell us that. It will always be right there. Yeah. yeah. And as we go, we'll look at different types of cases, but it, they're going to be pretty straightforward. 
factorial notation. So most calculators have a explanation button. That's your factorial button. What that does is that takes, if I plug in 5 factorial, I get 120, because that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you plug in 0 factorial, it's 1. By definition, a lot of students are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 0 factorial by definition is 1. So if you don't believe me, plug it in your calculator. There's only one on. I don't, I don't see zero, but it's yeah. one on. I don't see them. OK, so a lot of times if you have, if you go into, uh, probably two, uh, your probability, your probability, your probability, PRB button. I was. A lot of times it's in the PRB button. It's the third one. Yeah. If you have a PRB button and it go over three. I've had this since like eighth grade. That's where your combination and permutation button is. But that's not necessarily the factorial button. So people are like, oh, you need to get the Texas instrument. Yeah. super huge. I just, I know this one inside now, but I want to switch. So, yeah, and then it'd be like, I'm looking at other people's calculator, and I'm like, where is everything on that? Yeah, this one's like, if you do 0.5, it'll be a half. People are like, how do you get decimal? And I press this button. That's the same. Anytime you get that half quarter button, it's the same as taking 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So, 6 factorial is. 5 times 4 times 3, oops, not 5, 6. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or you could take 6 times 5 factorial. What? So what this is also the same as 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. So this is going to be, we're going to be able to use this in a formula to maybe cancel the factorial on top and bottom and see what's left. So anytime you have the factorial, what that is saying is that's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot dot 3, 2, 1. But you can always cut it off and say times 3 factorial because 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. Not so, like it matters, but you include 1 at the end? You do. Okay. But anything times 1 is anything. So yeah. And by definition, zero factorial is one. So, so when we, if we have to write that out, mm -hmm. um, are you going to want us to put like five times four times three times two times one, or can we leave the times one off? Um, should we just? Get you can just plug it in your calculator one? and put six factorial and tell me the answer. These are going to be in types of problems where you're going to have to interpret what it what it means. So the factor, if you write six factorial, I understand what you mean. Okay. So you don't have to write six, six times five. You, you okay. yeah. The yeah. six factorial is where it comes comes into. <laughs> um, here's some general. One factorial is one. Two factorial is two. Three factorial is six. Four factorial is twenty-four, and so forth. Some of these you might just know, or you can just have plug them right there in your calculator. So some of the formulas we'll be working with requires division of factorials. So this will be simpler if we make two key observations. N factorial over N factorial is always 1. For example, if I have 3 factorial over 3 factorial, that's 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 over 6, which is 1. Sometimes students will get in trouble with the way they plug it in their calculator. If there's more than one thing in the denominator, sometimes they'll just divide one thing and then actually multiply the second thing in the denominator. So we're going to be careful the way we plug things in our calculator. Um, kind of like I was saying before, you can write factorials without writing all the factors down to one. So anytime you write the factors, you can always cut it off and put three factorial or cut it off at five and put five factorial. This will be coming handy when we want to cancel something on top and bottom. This is just notation. Um, this is an application. So what is 8 factorial? Well, 
we can have our calculators and to take eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, or we can hit eight factorial enter. What do we get? 1,320. Yeah. 40, 40, oh, 40,000. 40,320? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, yeah. All right. That zero is not important. It's teasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. B, 12 factorial divided by 10 factorial. Exactly. You can put the 12 in, hit factorial, hit enter, hit divide by 10 factorial, enter. You might need to use parentheses depending on your calculator. Every, every calculator has a little bit different syntax. And after you get so big, it's going to give you an error, error with factorial. 12 factorial. 12 factorial works. Try 15 factorial. Yeah. It's, it's going to be big. Exactly. So let's let's write this out. Twelve times eleven times ten. It's a big old number, except when we divide it by ten factorial, because ten factorial is ten times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, right? So here, I could plug in 12 factorial divided by 10 factorial, or I could take 12 times 11, which is 132. 132? What? That's cool. So you should get the same thing by taking 12 factorial enter, some huge number, divided by 10 factorial enter. Depending on your calculator syn syntax, I don't know, some calculators make it a little different. 10 factorial divided by 12 factorial divided by 10 factorial and then hit enter. You could put it all in one line. But we want to be careful because we're going to end up with formulas with more than one thing in our denominator. So we want to be a little bit careful when we get there. Question. Yeah, good question. You said we're going, we're going to do chapter 11 now? Yes, this is 11 one. So we're going, we're getting off our uh, calendar. Our calendar says 11 one. All right. So as far as notation wise, it doesn't matter if you get the correct answer the way you do it. If you just say, I'm only going to put 10 times 11 because I clearly see it's only, or sorry, 12 times 11, I clearly see that. Or if you want to plug it in both ways in your calculator, make sure you get the same answer. There's going to be different approaches here. It's nice to see because I see what's going on. Eventually, these problems are, are, are not just can you yeah. plug it in your calculator. It's can you interpret it and then know the right formula and then get the right answer. So I'm more worried that if you know how to plug it in the formula, that you can get the answer out of your calculator. Do factorials have to be whole numbers? Um, that's a good question. I think so. Try, try 10.5 factorial. factorial equals error. Yeah, it has to be an integer. Okay. Well, what about negative numbers? Let's do that. I, I don't know if you uh -huh. pointed this out. I was really attentive, but it oh, yes, just kind of hit me. The dividing, yeah. the 10 factorial, mm -hmm. and everything after cancels out yes. on top yeah. and bottom. So then you're left with just yeah. 11. Exactly, yes. So, well, that you're, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're so less with negative. 10 times 11, and that equals 132. Okay. So you have two options there on your calculator. Okay, okay. so here's a good question. We you're both different. Just, it's yes. because notation. We if both you put just tried negative. Minus 2 factorial, your calculator is reading that as minus 2 factorial. What's a B2? But this has a negative button on it. If you have minus 2 factorial, it's going to give you an error. Oh, I know. So that's just syntax on notation. This is saying whatever's in parentheses factorial, and you can't take factorial as a negative number. This is saying negative 2 factorial, which is minus 2, because the factorial is only on the 2. Because it's doing the factorial first and then throws the negative in there. Exactly. It's order of operations. Gotcha. 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 <laughs> Those are good questions. <coughs> no, we're exploring. Yeah, that's right. See if you can break your calculator. <laughs> Permutation. So this leads us to being able to do some of these word type problems. 
So if I have an arrangement of n distinct objects in a specific order, that's called a, pre a permutation. So order here is important. Okay, so we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. And permutation order is important. Combination order is not important, which is a little backwards, which you think, because everyone thinks combination, combination lock. I need to put it in the right order, but it's not what it means. Permutation order is important. So specific order. The number of permutations of indistinct objects using all the objects is n factorial, which would make sense, right? Because I have n, if I have n objects, then I have n, and then I have n minus 1. If I already use that first object, if I use this second object, it's a permutation. If I take n of them, that's just simply n factorial. So if I have five different pins in my purse, and I want to know how many different permutations of five pins in my purse do I have, that's five times four times three times two times one, which is five factorial. <coughs> so let's look at this example. In seven of the ten years, the five major league baseball teams in the American League East Division finish in the exact same order. So how unusual is this? Find the number of possible finishing orders for these five teams. So we have five teams in seven of the ten years. In seven of the ten years, the five teams um, finish in the same order. How un or how uh, what did it say? How unusual is this? So I, for any given year, how many options do I have for who's placing first? Five. Five, right? How many options do I have for who's placing second? Four. Right. Here I'm using all of them because it's first to last place, so they're all getting a place. So the possible <coughs> there's 120 different possible finishing orders. The fact that seven out of the ten years they finish the same order, that's pretty cured. This is a. Uh, so do you take seven times 120 then? No, you, you don't do anything with the seven. You just do how many possible orders are there. There's 120 <laughs> different ways you can finish. The fact seven out of ten times they finish one way, well, eventually we'll get into probability and statistics. It's not a very good <coughs> problem because it's not random, right? There's, <coughs> There's things like how much you're paying your players and how you, you know. Is that even random? That's not random. No, that's what I'm saying. In this problem, it's we're going to look at random things like flipping a coin. That's 50-50, right? So it would be very unusual to get heads seven out of ten times. So eventually we're going to talk about really large numbers with ran random probabilities. Here, this is not a good probability type problem because it's not random. But there's 120 different ways the teams could finish. The fact they finish in the same order seven out of the ten years maybe not have a lot to do with probability and statistics. But a lot of times probability and statistics likes to put themselves into situations and in saying certain things when it doesn't there's a lot of extra extraneous um, circumstances. So looking at example five, how many different ways can a pledge class with 20 members choose a president Vice President and Greek Council Representative. So there's three different offices, right? Mm -hmm. How many choices do I have for my, my first office? 20. 20. How many do I have for my second? 19. How many do I have for my third? 18. 18. It just be 29? No, it wouldn't be 20 factorial because that would be 20 different offices. I don't have 20 offices, I only have three. So it's 20 times nine. You don't just take 20 factorial because I'm not using all 20 objects. I'm only using three of them. So that comes up with 6,840. I always like to, I always like to kind of write boxes or lines 
to tell me how many different things I'm choosing and then how many different ways I can choose them. That's down to the fundamental theory of the fundamental counting principle. I have 20 ways to pick a president, then I have 19 to pick a vice president, and then I have 18 to pick a Greek council representative. So this leads us to a, a formula that's called permutation. Permutation of n objects taken r at a time. The arrangement of n objects in a specific order using r of these objects is called a permutation. This is a formula. Your calculator has a button for this. This is how many objects you have. This is how many you're taking. If I have 20 objects and I'm taking three at a time, what do I get? So notation, you might have to plug in 20 permutation 3. Every calculator is a little different with the syntax, depending on the um, Yeah. <coughs> so you are probably going to have to do 20. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So that's exactly what the last problem was of the permutation one. You can use your calculator and know it's a permutation, or you could use the, the 20 times 19 times 18. <coughs> this formula, if it was 20 factorial divided by 20 minus 3 factorial, is exactly 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 factorial divided by 17 factorial is what we did before with the lines, 20 times 19 times 18. Will you want us to show formula or like test or something? If you're going to plug it in, I want you to tell me what you're plugging in. You don't have to plug it this way. Okay. You can say, I did 20 permutation 3 and I got this answer. Or you can say, it's going to be 20 times 19 times 18 because I have three planes. Okay. So the key here is to know this is a permutation problem, or this isn't a permutation, it's a different type. So eventually once we learn combination, it's going to be a little trickier because you have to identify, is this a permutation or is it a combination? So right now we, we kind of have different ways to approach it. You can use this way, you can use the permutation button, but eventually we're going to have more. So the key, the trick in this section is going to be identifying what type of problem it is. And the reason it's a permutation order matters. The first person picked is the president. The second is the vice president, or the vice president, and the third is the Greek council member. If I change the order, that's a totally different group, right? If I was just picking three at a time, it's going to be less than 6,840, but since I gave them different roles, each group is different. So order matters here. ABC is different than ACB. That's a permutation. Combination, we take out the idea or the order matters. If I'm picking three people to be in a group, it doesn't matter who I pick first, second, or third. Example six, how many five-digit zip codes are there with no repeating digits? So one, two, three, four, five. No repeating digits. How many options do I have for my first digit? Nine. Nine? Ten. Ten. Zero. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are my digits. No repeat. So ten, nine, eight, seven, six. which is the exact same thing as taking 10 permutation 5. No repeats that has to do with permutation. If they could be repeated, you would just take 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. You couldn't use your permutation button. So you have two options here. You can use the blank and just say 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Or in your calculator, you can say, what's 10 permutation 5? I have 10 digits and I'm picking five at a time. Order matters because one, two, three, four, five is different than one, two, three, five, four in zip codes, right? Order matters on zip codes. So it's a permutation. 
And I'm going to get the same answer either way, which is 30,240. Question? No. I guess the question is when do you use factor or factorial and then you could use the, so here the factorial button if you wanted to plug this in your calculator you know this is the formula and you want to plug in the calculator maybe your calculator doesn't have a uh, well no when would you use permutations opposed oh, to the factorial yes if order if um not order sorry basically things can't be repeated or if i was taking all 10 digits and I had 10 spots for them, that's just 10 factorial, oh, okay. which is the exact same thing okay. um, as 10 permutation 10. When you have X amount of space, you, can, you mm -hmm. have to use that. So there's things that are going to overlap. If I was taking 10 of them, I had 10 spaces, and they couldn't, and they couldn't be repeated, no repeat, that would be 10 permutation 10, which is the exact same thing as 10 factorial. Because if you plug it in, I have 10 factorial on top, and I have 10 minus 10, which is 0 factorial, which is 1, which is simply 10 factorial. So some of these things are going to overlap. Question? Um, when I read this, I would think that 10 would not be included because I didn't know that there was a zero to start, like, had a 10 number in it. So I don't know if it's not. It, it would have a 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, okay. 10 digits. Now I see where you're So, so some of these things are going to be exposure too. So now when digits come up, and they might say the first one can't be zero. Now I see what you mean because of the zero. So then what would be that? So then that would be a It would be because that no, be it would be nine. It wouldn't actually become it would be the fundamental uh, counting principle oh, okay. where you would have nine ways to do number one anyway. and you would have nine ways to do number two. Eight, seven, six, and we'll get, and we'll get to some of those where they're a little different. So right now we've learned the fundamental counting principle. If there's x amount of ways to do it one way, x amount of ways to do something else, you just take x times x. Right? That's the that's the line. That's the fundamental counting principle. Then we learned this formula. If we're talking about taking in objects at r at a time, I can use this permutation. It's going to be the same thing as the fundamental counting principle, but there cannot be no re there no repeats in the permutation formula. So if it says it can be repeated, you can't use permutations. That only works where there's no repeats. The last thing we're going to talk about is permutations of like objects. So the number of permutation of n objects, which K1 objects are like, K2 objects are like, et cetera. A lot of applications in this is like, how many different ways can I rearrange the, work, the letters in Mississippi? If I switch the two S's, that doesn't change the arrangement, right? So I have to divide out by any repeat. So the n factorial are how many elements you have. You divide out by how many of them are alike, how many of them are repeated. Where K1 plus K2 all the way to KP is the n. So let's look at the example here, Mississippi. How many letters are in Mississippi? Eleven. eleven. There's four different letters, but there's eleven total letters. So what do you, what do we do? What do we need to think about first? Eleven. N is the number of elements yeah. or number of no. letters. Um, number of total. Yeah letters no no it's not cardinality it's just the number number of objects i have okay s is an object and i have one two three four four of them mm -hmm. right it's still something but how many repeats do i have how many m's do i have one how many i's do i have how many s's do i have how many p's do i have so these add up to n Right? These are the K things, K1, K2, K3, K4. Oops. <laughs> Did that, you, you guys see that there? 
there are 11 letters, but some of them are repeated. And there's one M. So there's one M. So I can divide by one factorial. You don't have to write one factorial if it's one, because that's one, right? If you want to just kind of get in the habit, that's fine. How many I's are there? There's four factorial. So I have to divide out by four factorial times four factorial for the S's times two factorial for the P's. So this is what I need to plug in my calculator to find out how many different re how many different ways can I rearrange the letters in Mississippi and get distinct words. They're not going to be words because but if I just switch the S and the N, it's a different rearrangement, but I need to take out all those different combinations that they repeat. And that's what you do when you divide. You're, re you're dividing by the four factorial repeats when they want to count them one. And then the four factorials that have to do with the S, the four that have to do with the P, and the two that have to do with Oh, sorry, the four that I, four that deals with the S and the four that deals with the P. So order of operations are important on the, your calculator. Be careful the way you plug this in. See a lot of you using your phone calculators, which That's hard. It is tricky. I don't know how to put that in. Do it. So you can put it in all one line. You could say open parenthesis, 11 factorial, close parenthesis, divided by open parenthesis, 4 factorial times 4, oops, times 4 factorial. A keyboard or factorial times two factorial enter and that will just give you the answer you can put it in step by step you can put in 11 factorial answer write that large number divide by four factorial enter four factorial enter two factorial enter write those three large numbers multiply them together I wouldn't recommend that because you're, you're very likely to make a mistake you got a syntax area on that you don't exactly because one factorial is one so dividing and multiplying by one is not going to change that so did anyone else did you get 11 factorial sentence or did you put that whole thing in and get a syntax error i put the whole thing in like you just said in like syntax error yeah, yeah, I got a number. I got yeah you a number. might just have a, a, a parenthesis off here let me see what she plugged in my question is how do you plug in we did permutation so here i think that yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Right you, right you shouldn't use the permutation. It's the uh, there, there, factorial there. button. Okay. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that way you're talking I should give a gun holster. I've seen some like iPad holsters. They like put them on their leg. No. Bags, and I'm like, I don't know if that's cool or not. <laughs> It's all to you. That's when they spend too much money on the That's scary. Mm -hmm. Get it, make it a leg holster. Yeah. All the way down at my ankle. You cannot, you can't just add them. Because this is four times, four times three times two times one times four times three times two times one times two times one. Okay, yeah. Mm. No. So what do we get as our answer? You guys see that? So play around with the way you enter it in your calculator. You be a lot better off than playing around on the test. I want to make sure that you're, you're in it being correct right? and being comfortable with your calculator. Everyone's calculator could be a little bit different as far as the way you input things. So make sure you understand a lot of times you can just kind of google your calculator um you know, type your calculator if you don't know how to use it too well with like tutorials on how do i use the factorial button and they'll go through that with you
and we'll do we'll do more with it. So if you bring your calculator these next couple of weeks, I can show you this is how you enter it correctly, or this is what you're doing wrong type stuff during the lecture. All right, I'll see you guys on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. It's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah. 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 Yeah.